Internet land, what's good? It's your boy Cheese the Producer. It's Beatmakers the Squad. Today, I'm gonna show you something different. Let's go! Alright, so first things first, before I show you what I'm gonna show you today, I gotta show you something else. That was a little confusing. Whatever. Before I show you what I show you, I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna show you what I'm showing you like I show you like I show you. Gee, shut up. You can say it. Thank you. First thing I wanna show you is I wanna show you where I'm from. And where I'm from is Producerville. Yes, yes, y'all. Big shouts to the homie Ma for more beats. Uh, first off, if you make beats on the iPad and you don't know who Ma for more beats is, in the words of the great DJ Khaled, congratulations. You played yourself. <laughs> nah, uh, but for real though, you played yourself. Um, anyway, nah. I, I'm just saying. I just say that because like, um, I had Beatmaker One, and like literally, it was his videos on the Machine Masters page that got me into Beatmaker Two. Like I was completely like, like nah, I ain't messing with that iOS no more. Um, and like I got it for the phone. Just got me an iPad like two, three weeks in, and I just ain't never really looked back. Like, but anyway, this video ain't about that. What this video is about is how you can use external apps in Beatmaker 2. Um, how you can link them to Beatmaker. Also, how you can uh, set up MIDI for those apps and using, <coughs> excuse me, using your keyboard as a MIDI controller. Um, and when I say your keyboard, I mean the keyboard and Beatmaker too, like the on-screen keyboard. You can use that to control external apps. And it's very simple to set up. And also how to route audio. So, um, let's get to it. Okay. So today, we're just going to uh, go through how to link apps to Beatmaker 2. Um, and all the different things that come along with that. So the first thing you're going to do is add instrument. And just go to audio apps. And let's... Add uh, today, I'm gonna add Thor because this is probably something that a lot of you guys are running into. I don't know with Thor or with any other app. Basically, for me, when I try to connect Thor to Beatmaker, I run into this screen right here and it just keeps going and going and going and tells me that it can't uh, load up. So, I'm not even gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come out of there, go open up Thor right here. Usually for me it'll crash one time, but hey, it's good. It's good money tonight. So let's uh, go back into Beatmaker 2. And yes, yeah, so it can't start, but let's try it again. Boom. Good money now. Okay, so when you connect an app to Beatmaker 2, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that Beatmaker 2 is transmitting MIDI on the same channel as the app is receiving MIDI on. If your app is receiving MIDI on the Omni channel or on all channels, I mean, just gonna receive on all 16 channels. You want it to only receive MIDI on one. Reason being is because if you have more than one app uh, being used at a time in Beatmaker, it'll uh, avoid confusion. So in order to do this, what I usually do is I have my apps already set up um, with their with their MIDI channels. So I'm gonna show you in Thor, what you wanna do is you wanna go to your settings, okay? And this is usually universal. You go to the settings and that's where the mini channel is at. Um, you probably can't see this on the screen right now, so I'm just gonna uh, take a screenshot, all right? And so inside Thor, you'll see that I have it set up to um, receive MIDI on channel four. Now, if I go to sources, you'll see all the different sources that I have here. Um, you see my audio interface as well as my synthesizer. Okay, so now that we have the MIDI channel set in Thor, we need to have the MIDI channel also set in Beatmaker. So what we want to do here is we want to hit the MIDI icon so we can go to the MIDI configuration. The input channel is the channel that Beatmaker 2 will receive MIDI on. The output channel is the channel that Beatmaker 2 will transmit MIDI on uh, from this particular track. So I want this track to transmit MIDI on channel 2. So I'm just gonna have that one going out to channel 2. Now this track right here will transmit MIDI on channel 2, meaning that Thor will receive the MIDI and Thor will be able to play. 
Okay, so we got floor set up, and let's say, for instance, you're out and about and you can't really use a MIDI control or something like that. Um, so you want to use the screen on the keyboard, uh, the keyboard on the screen. Now, I personally, uh, the Thor keyboard is not really my favorite, you know, of the screen keyboards. I'm not really a screen keyboard kind of guy, but <laughs> when I do use them, uh, the one in Beatmaker actually I, I, I prefer one reason because it's in the app so you can actually use the keyboard in this app to control external apps now the way to do that is add an instrument add a keyboard hit empty preset whatever channel your app receives MIDI on you should make that the output channel of the keyboard that you just added so let's put this set channel 4 okay so now this is on channel 4 now you can see it's controlling the Thor which you can see here and this is why I can't stay this keyboard is so tight okay so now we have the keyboard set up to transmit MIDI to Thor and we have Thor set up to receive MIDI from B so now what we need to do is we need to set up the audio. Now let's take a look at the track really quick. Now what you notice here is we have the empty track uh, for the keyboard and there's an empty track for the Thor. Um, what I want to do is I want to actually record the MIDI for the Thor first and then record the audio. Now the thing about this track right here is that this track right here will record both audio and MIDI and it will record both on the same track at the same time uh, and, it, and it can be a little confusing um, when it happens. So one thing you can do in order to avoid that is to press the plus sign, it'll get you to this screen here, hit duplicate. Now what I'll do here is I'll designate one of the tracks for audio and one of the tracks for MIDI okay and so what I'll do is I hit the plus sign again and I'll rename this I'm gonna call this one uh, Thor audio okay and this one up here I'm gonna rename it and rename this one Thor MIDI okay now in order to make sure that I can record the MIDI and then record the audio. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the Thor channel and I'm gonna press the audio icon. It'll take me to the audio input configuration. Now you can see I have all these different inputs here, but the input I want is the one that's at the bottom, which is Thor. Now all these inputs are just the ones for my um, audio interface. So it works the same way on any other interface as many inputs as you have like it just it has them grouped in mono and then it has them grouped in stereo um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to disarm the recording but notice that thor is still selected so what that means is as long as i have monitors selected that means the audio from thor or whatever input bus i have selected will play through okay so now, the, with it, the way it's set up, I can record some MIDI and it won't record the audio. <clears throat> so let's do that. Alright, so now that we have that little bit of MIDI recorded, let's actually take, uh, now what we're going to do is, since it's on this empty track, I, I want to still be able to use this as my MIDI controller, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, and I'm just going to move it up to my Thor MIDI track, and now what I'm going to do is open up the Thor track, Now we usually do this at the end once I've already sequenced the track out. Um, and then record the uh, the audio, but you know we're gonna go in here on recording. And now, if 
I leave this one here on to record, what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna have MIDI and audio on the show. Okay, and that's not what we want. Okay, that, 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 that. okay. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually on this this channel here to record and when I on this one, this one automatically is this on. Okay, and remember the audio we have it on um, the recording on so what I'll do is I'll just start here and one thing I like about this is that when you it it'll loop the MIDI, but the audio will still keep going. Um, that's dope to me. Uh, so yeah, so now we have that recorded. Now let's say you made a sequence, okay, and like throw or something like that. Let's say that, that you thought that last little uh, that I did just did was like the greatest thing. I'd be like, yo, that's fire right there. We need to sample it. All right. No problem. Deep reset. Okay, now let's go to record. Now, you can choose Thor as your option to record. Now, the thing about it is, you gotta have it playing already, so. So. Record, choose store. One, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, two, three, one, four, and a one. All right, hit save. And then, you know, save the sample. I'm just gonna save it here. So, uh, A minor. Okay. So now, Somebody's in there saying, cheese, I want to use the other sample. Okay, no problem. Okay, that's the only thing about this one, is you got to have a sample in. You got to have a sample in there. Actually, let's turn the MIDI off. Okay, let's go back in here. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that you have the quick load, load sample, record sample, edit sample, but these are, you know, they're kind of like uh, darkened. So what this means is, in order for you to record a sample, you actually have to have a sample already loaded in. I know, stupid, whatever. All right, so I just loaded whatever in there. That's usually what I do. I hit record sample, oh wait, gotta go back. Start the other plan. Record sample. Choose store. This one. Okay, no, oh, and see, I was about to make a big mistake and hit that X. Don't do that. Hit save so you can save it. Okay, throw A minor two, whatever. Okay, stop that. See, what we got so now it's spread across the creek or across the keys. So, whatever sample you have, okay, you could actually just kind of, you know.
that's my style right there. Slow that baby down. But yeah, now you know how to route audio. Uh, you can get it. You can get your audio going into your tracks. Okay, you can either get it going into tracks, into your drum machine, or even into the keyboard sampler. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record this audio one more time because I'm gonna uh, just uh, show you something else that you can do. Make it be tripping. <laughs> I'm leaving that in there so y'all can see that. I love you, Maker. Let it be tripping sometimes. Anyway, um, so you'll see we have this um, this track here, right? So what we can now do, let's say, let's say you already recorded onto a track, right? But you're like, yo, I really want to kind of trigger that like a sample. I want a tape stop it or something. You know what I mean? Um, let's go into here. Okay, I'm going to settings. So let's say we want to tape stop that. I know we want to tape stop that. Uh, yes. But let's just say we did want to. Okay. So go on to quick load. And let's go back. Go into my content. Inside of my content, you see a folder titled Recordings, okay? In that folder, if you remember the name of the file you just recorded, you can find it in here. So. so now it's there. So now, I, you know, I can, uh, you know. As usual, thanks for watching. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also remember to hit that thumbs up button if you felt this tutorial was beneficial to you. Please do follow Beatmakers and Squad on Instagram so you can stay up to date with what we're doing. Also, like the Beatmakers and Squad Facebook page for more exclusive content from us. And on top of that, I like to say until next time, do remember to stay creative, stay motivated, and grind relentlessly. This is Cheese with Beatmakers and Squad, and I'm signing off, y'all. Peace.